Okay, it's Valentine's Day 2019. It's a pretty special day. I wasn't expecting this, it came out of the blue. There's a little bit of a backstory. For those of you that have ever read my threads or seen my videos, everybody knows I'm a big Japanese blade fan, whether it be traditional or modern adaptations, especially when it comes to the Phil Hartsfield line of Quakens and different pieces that he did. Phil inspired so many knife makers to reach out, not be afraid to, to bend traditional Japanese blade designs and styles and came up with a, a, a blade genre that today exists stronger than it ever did. A couple years ago, we, I did a thread and some videos on modern adaptations of the Japanese Quaken done by people other than Phil. And some fantastic makers sent me fantastic Quakens and it was a lot of fun. Uh, again, I've been carrying a Phil Hartsfield style Quaken for, God, since, my, since I was in my 20s and I'm 50 now, so a very long time. For me, a Quaken is one of the ultimate utility blades. It's a defensive piece and just has a great workhorse of a knife. Some are chisel ground, some are double ground. Back when we were doing this fun Quaken thing, and what it was, it was, it was the prompt makers to do Hartsfield style sides or hard sheaths. Matt Gregory was one of the guys that stepped up and had sent me a Quaken to play with. I inevitably ended up buying that Quaken and it's a fantastic piece. At the time, Matt and I had gone through a lot of different reasons about what I liked in the modern Quaken. Um, Matt obviously is known for one thing, detail. Matt is one of the most detail-oriented makers that I've ever come across. Matt's got an eye for perfection. He's unrelentless with his pursuit of perfection, and I love detail. Detail has carried me through almost every aspect of my life, from the hobbies I love to work. I've found that if you pay attention to the details, everything seems to work out. Matt is certainly detail-oriented. And everything I ever told Matt about what I would like to see in a Quaken apparently stuck in his head. Because today when I got home, now Matt does send me jam and jelly. Matt is a master jammer for those that didn't know. And he's probably pissed that I'm telling people this because he hoards his jam. But I do get a rare supply every year and I'm really thankful for it. And just last night, out of the weirdest, I was eating some of his cherry preserve on some ice cream. And I was thinking about Matt. I haven't talked to him for a while. I wonder if everything's well. Yada, 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 yada. A bit back, about two weeks ago, he had started a thread on Blade Forms called War Quaken. And I commented on the thread. I, I think I said, fantastic work, buddy. And when I saw that knife, I thought to myself, wow, Matt really took what we talked about and really kind of did it and did it in a big way. I never imagined today when I got home from work to be a box sitting here. I opened it up and there in the box was the War Quaken that Matt had made. I can't tell you how blown away I am by this piece. Now I'm gonna end up doing the camera over my shoulder so I can show some real details of this piece. And I'll, I'll explain the steel and everything else. But first and foremost, when you say war quaking, what does that mean? Most quakings today are smaller in the handle, about a five inch blade. This blade's five and a half inches, and more importantly, the handle's five inches from Turk's knot to back. It's got a coffin shape, which really facilitates a wicked, wicked, wicked handhold on it. Just incredibly well done. So I'm gonna pause the video. And next it's gonna come over my shoulder with some decent light and we're gonna look at this blade. All right, here we are with the Matt Gregory War Quaken. Wanted to give a close-up of this package. He's got Edo tied to act as a Segeo. This is the most important part of this style of Quake and Carry is, is the hard Saya. Matt's done his in carbon fiber. You can see retention on it is phenomenal. When it pulls, a lot of friction fit. He's got it lined with leather or some kind of ultra suede. Gives just a phenomenal snug fit. Again, it's not going anywhere. The hard sire and the retention is imperative for safety and for proper carry. Again, you can rig this in sash or in waistband. The steel is S7. 
He's got the flats with a mill finish and Matt's super clean grinds. Just super well done. The spine, he's scalloped out, which gives it just a beautiful, beautiful look. The grip is coffin shaped, carbon fiber on the bottom with um, the Edo wrapped and then resin soaked or brushed. L looks like a leather Turk's head knot. But again, facilitates a fantastic grip. Just super, super sticky. Moves great in the hand. So a very well done large, large quaking. So I don't know what to say about this other than I'm blown away. Um, I can't thank Matt Gregory enough for, for working on this for me and doing this. It's an incredible package that I'll cherish the rest of my life and, and continue to carry forever. Um, again, look at that fit. Just super snug, really well done. So the Matt Gregory War Quaken, uh, a fantastic piece. Again, Matt, thank you for your friendship and thank you for the great gesture. I really do appreciate it. Just wanted to go over how you carry in sash with this type of blade. Matt has the hard sire, and I stress this, that's what, one of Phil's greatest things was the hard sire. So how I usually carry this, I find a belt loop, I pass the string through the belt loop, I'm not even looking at what I'm doing, I pull it up. Then I can go in, cross draw, like that, or if I wanna conceal it more, I can go in waistband, or most comfortable, through the belt like this, super comfortable, but lightning quick and pulls on a static line, edge out. So again, just a wicked way to carry a blade, Modern adaptation to the Japanese Quaken is one awesome way to carry a defensive utility piece. Thanks again.